Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick right here with another Hot 10. Look, I'm gonna be real brief and I'm gonna get into this thing. Right now, we're gonna take just a few minutes to chop up and break down this thing going on with J. Cole and K. Dot, Kendrick Lamar, and some of the things that I'm hearing as an old school hip hop head, someone who literally born in the 60s, moved into their uh, teens at the end of the 70s and really ushered in hip hop um, and, and, and watched it go mainstream. Uh, I've, I've, I've loved it, I've mourned it, I have despised it, and it's all a part of the progression and evolution of what it has become. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about some of the things I'm hearing uh, that I don't think is a part of hip hop. I think it's a part of a bigger narrative. But anyway, before I jump in, I want to remind you guys, look, if you like what you hear, hit the like button, hit the share button, subscribe. If you believe in the work that we do outside of just talking about celebrity gossip, but the more important work we do on a regular basis, you know what it is. You know what I've done for over 30 years, the research, the community work, the mental health programs, the rite of passage initiative and on and on. Get into that. Uh, if you believe it, if you believe in it, and you want to support it, look in the description box and see how you can give. Your support is a big part of what makes this thing turn. Now, okay, I've listened to both. And here's the thing with me. It's one of those things that if you are a part of hip hop culture, you're going to have this moment where you got two MCs that you feel, that you like uh, for whatever reason. And then they're going to bump heads. With me, my first experience on that was LL and Cool Modi. And I was a bigger LL fan than a Modi fan, but I liked them both. And that was one of those conflicts. It happens. It's just, it, it's what it is. And this is one of those things for me. I like K-Dot and I definitely like J. Cole. And so to see what's going on right now is not necessarily something I've got to see. But just based on it, I'm not here to critique whose diss was the best uh, I've seen them all from, like I said, from LL battling Modi to battling cannabis uh, to uh, KRS-One taking on the Juice Crew to Pox, uh, hit them up, to Ice Cube's No Vaseline, to Nas's Ether, Jay-Z's um, uh, uh, track that never actually made it out because... He pulled it because his he said his mom told him that was enough not to not to release it. His response to Ether, um, Ether was the response to Takeover, the Takeover, uh, which was primarily a diss track to, towards Prodigy, and Nas got caught up in the end of the second verse and had an entire third verse dedicated to him. But the for, for the first and second and fourth verse was predominantly aimed at prodigy uh so i've seen it all i've heard it all and all that so you can and a lot of that who won who had the tightest this whatever all that stuff a lot of it's going to be about who you like the most or it's going to be about a specific punchline that you can't shake talking to a lot of the old heads listening to some of the old heads reading some of the things that the old heads have to say i'm in line with uh the thing there is that it's hot for you guys. It's oh, it, it's cool, but uh, I saw somebody that I definitely respect. I'm not gonna call their name because they have a professional career and I don't know what they want out there and what they don't want out there, so I'm respected. But the dude is definitely a hip hop head. And one of the things he said was, it had no replay value. Uh, he said that about both of them. It's like, you hear it, you go. And now I've heard someone else who, uh, is a female that I also trust who came up um, and was around for the burgeoning of the hip hop era. And she said that she's really feeling the Kendrick thing. And, and if you look at some of the people break things down, sometimes people can take a breakdown and take it five layers deep and make it be about something that's not even not, but it sounds good, it looks good and it fits and we jump on it. And the artist had no idea that, th that it would be taken that deep. They just came and they went at it. Ken is one of them people when you take that stuff four or five levels deep, you might want to actually believe some of the stuff that people are saying it had the subliminal second layer messages in, in, into it. Uh, what I'm here more to talk about is how everybody is 
writing off J. Cole's career because J. Cole pulled his disc and apologized. And everybody's saying that that's not hip hop, that's a queer hip hop. Well, first of all, the battle rap, the you know, the disses, uh, the cypher, all that stuff like that is one part of the hip hop culture. Rapping it of itself doesn't make up the whole hip hop culture. And because somebody backs down from a rap or decides they don't want to go toe to toe with somebody does not destroy a career, especially in a time now where people have their own brand. And what I see, and I could be dead wrong because I don't have J. Cole's ear, I don't have anybody's ear near J. Cole to know what J. Cole is thinking, but I've watched him make moves in his brand and as a business person for about 10 years now. And I've watched him move, so it tells me he has business acumen. And if he has business acumen, that means he has an awareness of brand. Now, what I understand, and I've talked about this when I was talking about the whole Don Staley thing, is that um, the whole Don Staley thing is that um, we have a tendency to demand people to do things where we have no skin in the game. We have nothing invested and nothing to lose. Uh, we we want somebody to um, go forward, you know, and, and, and as spectators in the peanut gallery. And there are times I spend in the peanut gallery. I'm a spectator. And I have nothing vested outside my emotional investment. That's why I don't get emotionally invested in sports. I have my teams, but my friends will swear I'm not cheering for my team or I'm not cheering against the opponent because I don't get excited either way. Why? Because I am not invested. I have no way of controlling the outcome and the outcome doesn't affect me in any way outside of I get some emotional high because somebody I claim is mine that isn't really mine wins. So that's how I think. So when I'm looking at what someone else is doing, if I don't have a vested interest I can sit up and say what I think should be done, but getting upset to the point where you're talking about somebody's career ending, uh, saying that they're not real and it was career suicide and not really knowing why they did it or what they did. And that's where we're at though. Everybody will sit up and say, you should have said this, you should have did this, but has nothing to lose, but will be demanding that the person that that's standing on a particular square do things a certain way because that's how they feel it should be done and to a lot of you uh young cats talking about that's not hip-hop well there are a bunch of dope artists that move throughout the annals of hip-hop history that never went at it toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone and had very su su successful careers you choose what's going on now why he did the diss and didn't do the diss as a behavioral special this is what I do I deal with human behavior and human outcomes I can uh, speculate from an educated position meaning that I probably can be closer at trying to disattain than an average person and what it basically looking at his content over the years and how he's evolved because there were some times he ate up some artists so to say that he doesn't do it or he hasn't ever d done it isn't accurate i've seen him eat up artists as recently as five or six years ago but i've also seen him evolve as an artist and as a person we're talking about somebody that rides around the city of new york on a bicycle a multimillionaire who rides around the city of New York on a bicycle, no, no entourage, no crew, no security. He just rolls. He's he's his own person. He's his own space, and he has that level of respect that nobody's touching him. So, here's the thing. My speculation, and, and again, that's what it is. My speculation uh, is that. He's in a space where he's very aware of his energy. His, his lyrics tell me that. His interviews tell me he's aware of his energy. He's aware of how he emits energy with his thoughts, with his words, with his behaviors on a hurt scale. He's on that type of level, right? And so what it tells me for him to do it, he did the diss either from an immediate emotional reaction or the pressure of people saying, man, that dude got at you like this, you need to get back. And succumbing to the pressure, 
but it tells me he probably didn't like what he felt like after he did it. Now here's something that may even be bigger. And again, I can't say this is what it is and I could be giving him too much credit, but from a person that observes how they love to take it, you're talking about two cats that over time have gave you dope beats and, 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 and crazy mad lyrics have also gave you some of the most uh, conscious and challenging lyrics and education about the system that you're operating in than anybody in their era, period, bar none. And now we've got them pitted against one another. So we're gonna take two champions that probably should be standing toe to toe. And let's, let's be clear, J. Cole caught a stray because he was hanging with Drake. Now, if you want to talk about somebody that's not really hip-hop, that's Drake. He is definitely pop. He moved from rapping to singing, and he crossed over. And for a business move, dope, smart move. He was never going to truly ever last it and be at the top of the pinnacle or be that person in hip-hop because of all the things that people who take shots at him talk about when they take shots. And I'm not going to get into that because I'm trying to keep my channel. But... In essence, you got all of these different things that all are part of the same dynamic. People who are sitting up demanding that someone who has a whole lot to lose do something they want to do when they have nothing to offer them and they have nothing invested. I don't think any of you would sit up and have somebody who has nothing invested in what you're doing and has no means through which to support you if you decide to take their advice coming in and giving you advice on something um that ha has their p potential to do that now what you may also have to consider again this is business and if you don't understand music from a business you're going to always take the emotional to and, and why wasn't it done this why wasn't it done that way okay the beautiful thing about uh, social media, the beauty, beautiful thing about the expanse of the internet and everything that's going on right now is that we literally have the ability now to build our brands. Uh, you know, I have a brand. My brand obviously isn't nowhere close to that of J. Cole or Kendrick uh, Lamar, but I have a brand and my brand is in need of me protecting, guarding, nurturing, building it, evolving it or whatever. And my brand is what people will recognize when my name and my image and my logo and all these other things are put in front of them. And the more brand awareness comes, the more people know what I'm about. If I'm about to expand outside of the realm of music, my brand is important. If I'm about to take a sp specific position in music, my brand is important. If it's more than just about going toe to toe and making everybody like me, then my brand is important. and. I have to be careful. Also, you don't know the affiliations that uh, this person has and endorsements and other things to where he may lose money, which to him is more important or lose money or lose access or lose support or lose affiliations or lose allies or all a bunch of other stuff because he's jumping on a rudimentary demand to go toe to toe with another black man and exchange insults. Now, uh, in losing that, he could lose his ability to have an impact in much larger ways than we can possibly fathom. This is the reality. This is the way the game is being played on a, uh, on multiple levels. But what we will do is we'll sit around and we'll see if it what it is because it's entertainment for us. That's all it is. Well, not for me, but for the people making the demands. It's about entertainment. They want to see them go at it. And, and again, nobody is is talking. To, you know, nobody's sitting up saying it's not not anything like a good diss track. Like I said, I can remember some of the dope tracks, some of the the ones that just stick in your craw. You know what was going on when that song came out. You know what it was about. You know what was going on. The bridge is over. Still one of the dopest disses. No Vaseline. Hit them up. Uh, these uh, Let's Go from, uh, I mean, they went back to back for a long time, LL and MOD. Cannabis and LL went back for a long time, uh, back and forth for a long time. You got these things uh, where, you know, the Nas thing started, looked like the Nas Jay Z thing looked like it was going to pop off. And then now it's, you know, it's a novice thing. 
And like you said, you can catch a good cipher and get all that you want. But everything isn't about seeing us go toe to toe. Now I get it. It to, to most people it's just entertainment. To me, I see two bright minds that might do better not crossing that path. Uh it's not and I heard some people talking about it. it's it it's the fear of losing. Uh you don't get to that level by having a fear of losing. Both of those guys have gambled on themselves multiple times. I don't think that's what it's about. I think that you got to be at some point more cognizant. One of the biggest hits I took is because I had one of the biggest hits I've taken in life to this point at age 56 was me carrying a hood mindset into a big uh, situation and creating a problem for myself that it took years to overcome. There's a time you grow up and you move different. And the culture of hip hip hop is so much bigger than just the, the cipher and the diss track and the beef. And there's room for J. Cole no matter what route he takes. I know a lot of people don't like it, and a lot of people think it's soft, and a lot of people think and one of the things that gets me is the whole word soft, soft, soft. We can't be kind to each other without being soft. We can't black men can't be kind to black women without being a simp. We can't everybody just wants to be hard all the freaking time and tear up every fucking thing in front of them. And nobody's thinking about building. You can't be hard all the time and build. There has to be some love. There has to be some concern. There has to be some wisdom. You don't fight every freaking battle. That's one of the first things my grandfather taught me. If you go out there trying to fight, fight every freaking battle, you're going to lose the war. Some battles don't need to be fought. And what I've learned is sometimes you choose your battles wisely. You win the right battles. You don't even have to fight the other battles. They fall by default. We've got to do better of really thinking bigger than what we see. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of pushback on cats that see what they see. But I'm telling you, I was there when all of this started. I looked at it and I've watched the up and downs, the ins and outs of this. And there's so much going on than what I hear people talking about. Everybody wants to see a good fight. I want to see my community elevate. And I want to see the elite and the best of my community thrive. And I want to see it done in a way that we can do. Can we do it without destroying one another? And again, nothing wrong with a good beef. Nothing wrong with a good... But I think that when someone says that's not what I want to do, I think we ought to respect it. Um, go find some people who want to beef. There's plenty of them out there. Hell, they killing each other behind these damn records. Go find one of them. Look, that's it on, on for me on that note. I'm out here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of the day. Remember, if you want to support the work we do, look in the description box. Click the link and give. On that note, I'm out. Take care.